Hey guys, it's me, Ms. Norris, and in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to share the story of not one, but two amazing women, Ella Fitzgerald and Marilyn Monroe. In the story, Making Their Voices Heard, the inspiring friendship of Ella Fitzgerald and Marilyn Monroe, we learn about these two extraordinary women. The story, Making Their Voices Heard, was written in 2020 by Vivian Kirkfield and illustrated by Aliana Harris, and it tells the story of two amazing women. If you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Making Their Voices Heard, the inspiring friendship of Ella Fitzgerald and Marilyn Monroe. Ella and Marilyn. On the outside, you couldn't find two girls who looked more different, but on the inside, they were alike full of hopes and dreams and plans of what might be. So this is Ella Fitzgerald and Marilyn Monroe. Ella Fitzgerald was a singer and Marilyn Monroe was a very famous movie actress, but not in the beginning. Ella sang for her supper on the streets of New York City, but she dreamed of sharing her voice with the world. When she stepped on stage for an amateur night competition at the Apollo Theater, her voice brought the crowd to their feet. Goodbye, street life. Hello, jazz band. Song after song, Ella scaled high notes and low notes on her way to fame. So she went to a singing competition and won and got a band and was singing different places. Dreams do come true. <clears throat> Marilyn painted airplane parts in a Holly in Hollywood, California factory, but she hoped to become a great actress. When a photographer snapped pictures of women helping with their war effort, her brilliant smile captivated the camera. Goodbye, factory job. Hello, studio contract. Movie after movie, knowing just when to laugh or cry on cue, Marilyn inched closer to stardom. <clears throat> so just like Ella Fitzgerald, Marilyn Monroe kind of won a contest herself. She was working and someone took her picture and they said, you're just right. And she made movie after movie. For years, Ella's velvety shooby dooby doos wowed audiences. Jazz greats like Dizzy Gillespie, Louis Armstrong, and Duke Ellington couldn't wait to share the stage with her. She sold out her concert tours abroad. That means across the ocean. But still, in her own country, too many doors were closed to her. In 1954, some club owners worried their customers wouldn't come if they played jazz music. Many wouldn't hire black performers and others would only showcase glamorous female stars like Lena Horne, Dinah Shore, and Edith Piaf. But Ella refused to give up on her dream. So in other places of the world, Ella became, was selling out her shows. But here in America, people wouldn't hire black artists to sing and they said they pro people probably won't like it but Ella just kept on. <clears throat> Marilyn struggled with not having her voice heard in a different way. She dazzled fans with her baby blue eyes and breathy boop boopy doos. But when she asked for better scripts and a higher salary, the studio bosses ignored her. As a woman working in an industry run by men, she found that her needs and her opinions didn't matter to them. One day, her manager handed her a new script with a big singing role. He told her to listen to the best female singers so she could learn tempo and tone. Marilyn knew who the best was. Her idol, Ella Fitzgerald. <clears throat> so no one wants to pay, pay Marilyn Monroe more or let her do better shows. And they, set, they gave her a role in a singing movie and told her to listen to the very best. Finally, the movie premiered. Critics praised Marilyn's performance. 
They loved her singing style and unique voice. Fans waited in long lines at the theater. The studio made lots of money. Now, when Marilyn spoke, her bosses paid attention, and reporters and photographers followed her everywhere. <clears throat> the movie was called Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, and that's starring Marilyn Monroe. Determined to thank Ella in person, Marilyn bought a ticket to Ella's next show. Ella took the stage. She looked out at the audience. Was that her favorite actress singing, sitting right there? So Marilyn went to the show to say thank you in person to Ella Fitzgerald for being inspiring. And in the meantime, Ella Fitzgerald's like, what is this? She's my favorite movie star right there. <clears throat> when the show was over and the crowd thinned out, only two women were left. Sitting shoulder to shoulder, Ella and Marilyn chatted. Marilyn idolized Ella because the singer always remained true to herself. Not only did she love Ella for her voice, but she also loved her as a person. Marilyn told Ella how much she had learned by listening to her records. Ella's heart sang. And in doing so, she had helped Marilyn find her voice. <clears throat> so it turns out they both had kind of an admiration for each other, but never had the chance to meet. And they both helped each other. Ella was already famous for her voice, but because of discrimination, not everyone was able to hear it. She told Marilyn that the owner of Hollywood's top night spot the Macombo refused to hire her. Marilyn empathized with Ella. Although she didn't know what it was like to be singled out because of her race, she did know what it felt like to be held back because she was a woman. As Ella helped Marilyn find her voice, now Marilyn wanted to do the same for her. Putting their heads together, Marilyn and Ella hatched a plan on the streets of Hollywood. <clears throat> Ella picked out her music, practiced her songs, and polished her vocals, while Marilyn called the owner of Club Macombo to make a deal with him. She'd bring the media to the club's doorstep if he'd hire Ella to perform. Reporters would write about it, and everyone would want to buy a ticket to Ella's shows there. The owner said yes! So Ella practiced, Marilyn used her voice in a different way to make phone calls, and it worked. The owner said yes. <clears throat> On opening night, the club was packed. Ladies in sequined gowns, men in shiny tuxedos, reporters and photographers crowded inside. Draped in furs, Marilyn sat at a table up front, ready to cheer on her friend. Head held high, Ella took center stage, ready to wow the audience. So you see Marilyn and Ella getting ready to sing. The band played, Marilyn swayed to the melody, Ella swayed to the rhythm, Marilyn held her breath. Ella filled her lungs and unleashed her musical genius. She sang her heart out for every man, woman, and child whose voice needed to be heard. For the rest of their lives, Ella Fitzgerald and Marilyn Monroe remained good friends. Ella never missed one of Marilyn's movies, and Marilyn never stopped listening to Ella's songs. On the outside, these two stars couldn't have looked more different. But on the inside, they both understood that sometimes even stars need a little help to shine. The end. And <clears throat> here's a picture of the real. Ella Fitzgerald 
and The Real Marilyn Monroe, taken in 1954. Working together. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the story, Making Their Voices Heard, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I hope to, oh, a big shout out and thank you to the Howie family for loaning me so many wonderful books, including this one. And I thank you and I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.